Hello everybody, I'm Thomas. Welcome back to another video. This time doing something a little bit different. I'm going to be playing Dungeons and Dragons using the Mythic Game Master Emulator 2nd Edition. So I'm going to be using Foundry Virtual Tabletop, which is my virtual tabletop of choice. I've used others in the past, but this is by far my favorite. And I'm going to be playing just a short little adventure of Cheval and Garanas. I kind of teased in my Escape the City video that would be kind of fun to maybe do some sort of backstory with how these characters meet. So I figured that's what we'll do today using Mythic. If you've never heard of Mythic, I've used it once on the channel in the past, but it's this really great Game Master emulator that gives you like a structure for scenes. It has a table that you can ask questions on that varies depending on the chaos rank. It's got a lot of other cool random tables, so that's what we'll be using today. So I'll go over real quick everything I'm using for this video. I'm using, like I said, Foundry Virtual Tabletop for what I'm playing on. Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition is the game system I'll be using. Mythic Game Master Emulator 2nd Edition is what I'll be using to kind of run behind the scenes stuff. And then I do have these two extra books that I use to help generate some of the stuff to start with. Table Fables, Table Fables 2. These are a great couple of books. This has a lot of great random stuff, more random stuff, but more specifically for world building, which is this is the main book I use to kind of get some info to start this adventure. So there is this adventure journal that you fill out to start. So the adventure title is where two paths cross because this is where Cheval and Garanas meet. And it's also they're meeting in front of a church talking to a priest. So I figured cross that kind of works well for the first scene. It's what we just meet in this priest named Newt in front of the church. I rolled up some weather, so it's going to be it's lightly snowing out, it's chilly, and there's a slight breeze. I use the Table Fables 2 to generate a little town to start out named May Springs. It is a village of about 800 population. Quality life is decent. The government is democratic. Their primary export is dye. Uh, the primary architecture is, you know, two to three story like buildings, usually made from wood. The town center is this raised wooden deck. The history is there was some Great Depression in the past, and some notabilities of the town is there are canals going everywhere. They do have roads, but they have a lot of canal systems going on. Um, the NPC I'm meeting is named Newt, and their role is a priest. That's all I know about them. On the back of this page, there are the two lists that Mythic you need to kind of keep track of. You have your threads list and your characters list. Threads list keeps track of your missions, goals, stuff you want to accomplish. So I have included one thread for each Cheval and Garanas' kind of backstory. The first thread being meet with Newt about task. That's kind of something that applies for both of them. Investigate mysterious plant plagues. So I use Mythic to roll up some character background, like motivations. So for Cheval, it's investigate mysterious plant plague because I rolled like, I forget what the, the combo of words was, but that's what it's just, it was like uh, mysterious environment, I think. And so I was like, oh, maybe some plant, like disease plague came to their hometown, affected all the crops. So now Garanas is trying to figure out what caused that, maybe how to stop it. And for Cheval, they're, thread is to track down Onfan. Um, Onfan, I just rolled up a random name for a mythic, is this person that uh, the the two words I, I got to describe them was like intellect and fear. So I thought this was someone that is very smart and scary and is using their force for bad. So some for some reason, Cheval is trying to track them down. Who knows exactly why I haven't figured that part out, but that's just another thread I wanted to add. As far as the character lists, we have Newt, we have May Springs, because you can add towns and non-character things to the character list, and then we also have own fun, so maybe they'll show up at some point. The last other kind of uh, source I'll be using is my own little uh, random DC generator, so if I'm like trying to sneak past some guards or lockpick a door and I just want a kind of random DC that I need to hit, I have this little generator based on the, I think these are from the Dungeon Master Guide, and I've kind of just made them a little bit randomized, so you still need to kind of pick a difficulty of like easy, very easy, moderate, hard, very hard, or impossible, roll a d10 that kind of modifies the DC value and it gives you a random DC. With that all out of the way, we can just go ahead and get started. So I don't really have too much in mind besides what I've laid out. So this is going to be kind of just seeing what happens. The main thing, I just think that Cheval and Garanas are meeting with Newt. This is where they're crossing paths because some task that Newt needs completed, they need the help of both Cheval and Garanas. So this is where they're going to be meeting for the first time on completing this quest. The other thing I want to do is since this is like kind of a prequel to my Escape the City uh, playthrough, I kind of want to make it so at the end of this playthrough, they're off to Wadaroo City. So then it kind of makes sense that 
and the Escape the City, that's kind of where the adventure picks off. So I'd like to at least have them en route to Waterloo City for some reason, and then that kind of will make sense with uh, what's happening in that other playthrough. Okay, so we'll say it's early in the morning in May Springs. Cheval and Garnas have kind of just uh, gathered outside of this church that they have both kind of separately been been called to for this task. And like I said, it's kind of snowing out. There's a light breeze. It's chilly for sure. So they're definitely probably bundled up, uh, have some stuff maybe under their armor or whatever. But, um, it, you know, it's, it's cold out. So they're waiting outside for a while. I imagine as they're just waiting for Newt, um, since they've both been brought to this location at a specific time, I think they start chatting and realize that um, they're both uh, here for the same reason. And as they're starting to get to know each other, Newt comes on out and... Okay, so first things first, the chaos factor starts at 5 whenever you start Mythic, so we're going to roll to see if the scene goes like I thought it does. So we're going to roll a d10, and that rolls a 4, so it is different? Okay, so right off the bat, we, since that was a 4, it's under the chaos factors, so something is going to happen. Since it's an even, the scene is interrupted. Okay, so an interrupted event means pretty much a random uh, event happens. So an interrupted scene means a random event happens. So first thing I need to do is roll a d100 to see what the event focus is going to be. So a 31 means that the focus will be an NPC action. Well, um, since it's NPC action, I don't really think I need to roll to see who the NPC is, I think it just makes most sense that it's going to be new. So let's roll on the action table to see what their action is. So we got 87 and whoops, I only want one more. Um, 87 and 88. Okay. So the pair of words, I'm going to use just the first action table. 87 is succeed and the second word is support. I think maybe how I interpret that is succeed of support. So maybe in my mind, Newt wasn't sure that they were going to get any support. So they come out, Newt opens the door of the church and sees Cheval and Garnas there. And they just get like so happy, you know, they're not just like, oh, hey, what's up? They're just like, they almost are brought to tears that, that it seems like their call has been heard and whatever support that they need has, has arrived in this duo of uh, of badasses. So, okay, okay. So, Newt has um, is very appreciative that Cheval and Garnas are here. So let's just get right down to what is this quest? What does Newt need help with? Okay, so let's roll on the action table to see what this quest is. So, oh, that doesn't, okay, there we go. 16 and 83. 16 is carry, 83 is Start. Carry start. Ooh, but I'm looking at the other action table, and the other one is conflict and safety. I kind of like that better. So con conflict and safety. Okay, so what I want to do to get a little bit more context is I'm going to roll twice on the descriptor table, because I think this is a conflict of safety of something in the city. So maybe two sides are not sure how to handle some conflict. And so... Um, or how to keep people safe. Like there's there's maybe a opposing uh, views on that. So 60 and 65. So a description could be loosely, <laughs> meaningfully. Okay, actually, I think what might be better is there's like an objects table. So maybe this will just give us kind of a thing that people are conflicting about, I guess. Um, so 60 and 65 would give us mechanical and mysterious. Okay, well that's pretty that's pretty interesting. So what I think what comes to mind is that somewhere in May Spring, some mechanical device maybe just fell from the sky for some reason, and there's a disagreement on what to do with it. Do you try to get rid of it? Do we? It, maybe this just happened, so this is an active issue, and maybe where it fell is an issue also. But I like that. So there's some mechanical object. Maybe the people don't know what, so there's like the scientists or like the engineers who want to go figure out what this mechanical thing is, or there's the more concerned people that they're like, oh, this is kind of in the middle of the city. What if it's like an explosive and you mess with it and the whole town goes boom, or 
some people just want to get rid of it. Some people want to move it somewhere. So there's a, there's a conflict of how to deal with this mechanical object that has fallen from the sky like a meteor crashed into the, we'll say, kind of towards the center of the city. Yeah, that sounds like a new thread then. So I guess I'll write maybe like resolve conflict, safety conflict over mechanical object. Let's maybe roll, I want to roll 2d20 or 2d100s to get a little bit of a description of this object. What does it look like? Okay, well that, what does the individual get? 26 and 74. So the object is, um, we'll go with this table, extraordinary. And what was the other one? 74, plane, extraordinary plane. So maybe, I mean, it looks mechanical, but maybe it's not very intricate. Maybe there's not a whole lot of markings on the outside. It just looks like, Maybe like a box or a sphere or just something very plain looking. So they're not too sure at a glance what it is. They don't want to go poking around too much because it could be like an explosive or something or a weapon. Who knows? That Not very often that mechanical objects just fall from the sky in the middle of a city. So people are cautious, but people also want to get it out of the city if it's dangerous or to figure out what it is and all that stuff. So it is a plain, it's an extraordinarily plain mechanical object it's fallen from the sky in the city center. And Newt, we'll say it's it's fallen in the city, but maybe it's fallen like part of like, it's fallen in part of like the church property. Maybe it hit a church, hit part of one of the churches. So that's why Newt is the one coming to us. Yeah, you, see, you know what? This sounds like a, this sounds like a great question for the Oracle. So let's ask, did this mysterious object, did it like hit the church? Is that why, like, is it like, in the middle of a church or is it just kind of near a church so like did it like destroy a church or something so let's let's say this is probably we'll say un, we'll say 50 50 because i really don't know um so with a chaos rating of five that is a 62 so that is a no so 62 no so okay this object it's not in a church so there's no direct damage but it's near it, maybe on their property or something like that. So still in the city, didn't hit the church, but it's near it. So that's why Newt is coming, uh, was reaching out to find people to help. And that's where they found us. So, yeah. We'll say like, I don't know, maybe Garnas, I mean, is a cleric. So they're pretty in tune with the religious folk and knowing what's going on. So um, maybe they just came when they heard the word. Well, maybe Cheval had saw it like posted up on like a bulletin board and they're here more for i mean to help people obviously but more for the the money while garenas is like a cleric so he's like oh i gotta go help my uh, my priest brethren okay i think that's enough info to get started um okay let's let me ask this to mythic is there um is newt gonna be providing us any kind of monetary reward we'll say this is a uh, we'll say likely we'll say likely um see what that is oh they're, that is an extreme yes. So they are not only offering a reward, but a very high monetary reward of probably lots of gold. Um, let's maybe just roll a, like a, a D100 to see how much we each get. So like 36 gold for a couple level threes. I mean, that's not, that's not chump change. So we'll, we'll take it. Um, so yeah, he promises us each 36 gold if this task can be completed. So we accept and we go on our, he gives us the directions to part of town where this mysterious object landed and we go off to go start figuring out what's going on. So the start of a new scene. Well, first, um, that is a thread complete because we didn't meet with Newt about the task. And so now we got a new thread to go investigate the chaos factor. I would say we were pretty in control. Um, so we'll say the chaos factor goes down. Okay, so that was the end of that last scene. Um, Chaos Factor went down, we crossed up one of the threads off our list, and we got a new scene on our hands, which is to just head to the object and start figuring out what's going on there and hopefully fix, uh, fix this issue. So, uh, first things first, gotta roll a d10 to see if the scene is uh, interrupted or altered, which it is. It is a two, it's less than the Chaos Factor of four, it's an even number, so it's interrupted again. So let's see what interrupts us on our way there or maybe finding the object. 87, so that does have something to do with 
the current context. So we'll maybe roll 2d20 on the action table to see what's what's interrupting us, I guess. Um, so we got a 90 and a 61. So take misuse. Hmm, okay, I like this. So the scene was interrupted. Interrupted scene means the scene doesn't happen like we wanted to. I like the idea that this was... I don't know, let me double check this. Yeah, take and misuse. I mean, I feel like that works great because we're supposed to go find this object that has been all this controversy, right? So we walk to the uh, the area where it's supposed to be and it's not there, it's gone. And we'll say that some of the local you know, police, the guards or whatever that, that run the town um, are there and they're they seem confused like maybe that the, they were that this object was here yesterday and now it's not and they're not sure what happened to it okay yeah i like that so we roll up at the scene and there's guards there and we could see like the crater where it was supposed to be newt gave us a pretty good description of where to find this thing but we could clearly see this was supposed to be a fairly decent sized object that it is not there and so let me get a, a name for maybe this head guard that we, uh, as we approach, that kind of comes up to us. So I'm just going to use the good old table fables to just roll up some random name here. And we'll say that the guard's name is, we'll go with Lorke. I like Lorke. All right, so his name is Lorke. So some guy comes up and uh, they are the head of guards. So their name is Lorke. I'll add them to the uh, characters list just so I also I don't forget their name, but also so they can do other stuff in the story. So, okay. Um, so clearly someone has taken this thing. Uh, that, that seems to be the consensus. So Laura K doesn't really know what's going on. I mean, the, 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 the words that interrupted the scene, I'm trying to take and misuse. So someone took it, maybe is planning to misuse it or something along those lines, right? The, just the object is gone. So we roll up to the scene. Lorke is like, who are you? And we're like, oh, you know, Newt sent us to investigate this object and, you know, figure out what, try to help dis, dis, um, to help resolve the disputes that have been going on between how to properly handle this object. So, okay, this guard um, kind of gives us the, the lowdown that, well, it was here yesterday. They were supposed to be guarding it and they they came for their morning shift and the thing was gone um i want to maybe roll a deception check on this guard as they're kind of giving us the story to see if they're really telling the full truth so a deception check i'm going to use my little generator here and say that's just going to be maybe a moderate or hard deception or a, this is an insight because i'm going to see if they're lying so this will be an insight check we'll do this is a guard, like the head guard. So I'm gonna, we'll do a hard insight check to see if I could tell that they're lying. And I will just have a, Garenas is, is a bit better at reading people. So we'll have Garenas do an insight check. So they will roll their a d20 and Garenas has a plus five insight. So they only get 10, which is gonna be, I mean, it's it's way lower than the hard. So guard seems to be telling the truth as far as uh, good old Garenas can tell. So, okay. So this object disappeared. Let me ask, would the guard have maybe any like lead suspect that we can maybe start tracking down to figure out who took this object? Okay, so the guard seems to be telling the truth. This thing was taken. Do they have an idea of who took it? So let's ask the Oracle. Let's say they probably do. So let's say it's very likely that they have at least some idea. Uh, so a 75 on very likely is, yes, they, they do know who, or they have some idea of maybe who took it. So one thing I kind of want to know now is this, was it just some sole individual or do they think it was some group? Some, I mean, it could have just been still one person, but was it one person acting alone or was this like some gang that's trying to take this or like, uh, is it just a sole person working by themselves or is it a group? So maybe I'll ask the guard is whoever took this are they working as a group or are they part of some like organization um i don't we'll say maybe we'll say likely this is likely so with a chaos ranking of four let's see 
is this a sole individual or someone kind of working as a group? At least, what does the guard think? So they rolled a 42. Um, so that would be a yes that they are working as a group. Um, okay, so okay, so the guard says that they think whoever took it is part of some group. Um, do they have a group name? I kind of want to get like a... I kind of want to do like a... I'm going to do 2D100. I'm going to go descriptor object. So just to roll up some like group name. Um, so the 2D20s gave us a 14. So they are the ceaselessly, ceaselessly, and uh, the object is, what did I say, 60? So ceaselessly mechanical. No, I, I kind of like, you know what, we'll go with the, the first thing I was saying, where we go ceaselessly and object. So I kind of like that 60 is mechanical, so that works out too dang well. Um, I kind of don't like the first word, so... Maybe we'll go with the other option for 16, which is, or sorry, 14. I don't really like that first descriptor. I like mechanical. Let me, this is the great part of Mythic. You could just re-roll if you don't love the result. So 70, um, mysteriously old. Okay, I like old. So the old mechanical, this mechanicals, maybe we'll add an S. So the old mechanicals is the group, which makes sense. Um, because this thing was a mechanical object. So that works out. They call themselves the old mechanicals. And maybe the guard suspects that this group is the one behind it because maybe they were the biggest ones kind of causing a controversy when it came to um, this object. Maybe they were one of the big, big voices in like the butting of heads that's been going on between like what the guards want to do with it, what the researchers want to do with it, what the priests want to do with it, what this group wants to do with it. So maybe they were one of the big factors. So that's why the guards are like, these, these people probably did it, but they don't have proof. Do they? Let me see. I don't know. Do we, I don't think the guard has any proof that they did it, but let's ask Mythic. Um, does the guard have any proof that the old mechanicals group is behind this? Um, I'm gonna go with it's unlikely that they have proof. Yeah, we'll say it's unlikely. So that is a 16. So it's just, um, no, no, I'm looking at the wrong thing. Yes, they do have some proof. So maybe the proof that they have, I'm just trying to think of like something like pretty simple. So maybe the old mechanicals, um, they have some like certain robes that have like, I don't know, a cog or something like a mechanical cog. And maybe that has like certain designs on the robes and maybe like part of a fabric was found there where the object was. And that area has been probably like, I don't know, kind of quarant not quarantined off, but like enclosed off so no one could get there. So the fact that this object is missing and these tattered robes of this group are there leads the guard to think, hmm, I think it's this group. They don't have evidence. I mean, that they have some evidence, but like... That's all they got is that piece of robe was found there. You know, it could be someone else that took some old mechanicals robes, put it on, went to go steal this to go, I don't know, blackmail the old mechanicals. So who knows exactly, but it was a piece of the old mechanicals robe that was found at the scene of this crater, this metallic object crater. So that is what um, Lorke has been telling us. So then... Um, I, I guess we'll ask, I mean, since we're trying to go help with this, resolve this situation, maybe we'll ask Lorke, do they know where we can find the old mechanicals and maybe question them and see if we could, you know, figure out what's going on. Um, so asking the Oracle if this, they know where they are, I'll say it's very likely. Um, it is a two. So that means they know, that is an extreme yes. So they know exactly to find these guys or at least maybe where they frequent maybe you know where their meeting spot is so the guard knows where they're at um why my question that i'm trying to figure out in my head is why would the guard if they have an idea to these people and like why are the guards not looking into this like why are they just standing around here and <laughs> i don't know are they trying, because if they already have an idea, why have they not started looking yet? Is there maybe something else going on in town that's like preoccupying the guards? Are they don't want to get involved with this conflict? So I'm trying to figure out 
maybe that's something um, that we can maybe roll a couple of action or something on the uh, some table to figure out why these guards aren't able to currently look into this and why they would want us to start looking into it. Okay, so let's roll 2d20. There is a character actions general table that I'm going to roll on. So we got a 75 and a 51. So that gets peace and imprison. Okay, so maybe they are already kind of uh, peace and imprison. So maybe they're already, I mean, there's some guards uh, maybe just doing their normal guard duty, you know, trying to keep, and they have like a prison here that they're trying to keep uh, people in, you know, trying to keep the peace. Um, and maybe also there's been a recent like uptick uh, of them having to, uh, because of this incident that they've been having to imprison more people. So they're trying to keep the peace while the guards are busy just maybe trying to protect this area from people that are trying to snoop more or cause, you know, more hassle to the ongoing investigation. Um, you know, maybe some of them have already been caught for trying to interfere with this and maybe the guards are just working at, you know, the guard post trying to just keep an eye on the locked up people. So we'll see that there's probably not a whole lot of guards at the scene besides um, Lorke. So that's kind of why that Lorke is fine with us taking the helm to go investigate this issue. And so I think what Lorke would probably say is that the old mechanicals are located in a city. We'll say maybe between, we'll say it's like a city, like let's just say north, okay? Just to give it a, a direction. And then we'll say maybe that May Springs, where they are now, uh, we'll say Wateroo City is between May Springs and the city that they need to go. So, that's how they got to Wateroo City, is was because Cheval and Garnas, that wasn't their final destination. That was more of just a stopping point in between to get to this other city where the old mechanicals are kind of located out of and that the guard thinks they're at. Okay, real quick, I'm gonna roll up 2d12 to see what the name of this uh, city that the old mechanicals are out of. So that's like a five and a one. So it's King's Forge is the town, city, whatever, that the old mechanicals are located out of and that the guard thinks that's that's where we're going to find them. So maybe maybe also like the old mechanicals, like there's some here in May Springs, but that's not like where they're most active. They're most active out of uh, whatever it's like King's Forge. So that's where Cheval and Garnas are heading now. And I think that's where we'll pretty much wrap up the video. So that kind of makes sense in the lore timeline that, okay, they went to Wateroo City, all that Escape the City stuff happened, and then maybe after the Escape the City stuff happened, they continued their journey to King's Forge to try to figure out what happened with this mechanical device and kind of confront the old mechanicals. And yeah, I'm gonna wrap up the uh, video here. I kinda wanna keep this one a little bit shorter. I know we didn't get to do too much, but hopefully we got an idea of what this new version of Mythic's all about. It's, it's pretty similar to the old one, but I really like this as a way of just generating a story and having a way to just emulate a game master. Obviously it's not all the same, but I think it provides a pretty nice structure, especially when you start getting more into it, getting more characters, more threads, more random events. It just starts adding a lot of cool stuff. So I think it's a really cool system. I will post the link down in the description if you want to check it out yourself, but I definitely recommend it, especially for solo gaming. But you can also use it for, if you are in, um, if you are a DM and you just need to come up with stuff on the fly, or if you're trying to pre-prepare stuff for like, a D if you're DMing and you just want to have, you know, a world built or quest built, you can use the mythic to kind of pre-generate stuff a lot. But I obviously primarily use it for solo because I think that's what it's best at. So yeah, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, a like would be greatly appreciated. And until next time, I'll see you.